So in today's Creative Confidence Catch-Up, I'm going to be chatting with Linda. So Linda, would you like to chat about yourself and say what you're all about? Hi, good morning. I'm Linda. I'm from Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, my work uh, title is I'm a somatic uh, body worker, Reiki master, and I also provide um, counseling for uh, Indian residential school survivors. And my business title is uh, working. Um, we just recently opened an Airbnb in 2020. So uh, providing healing retreats and uh, getaways for people across the world. So yeah. Brilliant. No, thank you for that. So um, my first question to you today is, have you been through an experience in your life um, and you feel like your uh, confidence has been affected by it? And so as a result, you've kind of gone on uh, through on this journey doing what it is that you're doing. Yeah. So uh, originally we didn't plan to uh, open an Airbnb. Um, we were renovating the building for my son, but uh, during the renovations, he had uh, taken his own life so I'm so sorry to hear you thank you and it's been difficult it's been a long journey of healing and um so yeah after months of grieving we decided to open up a guest house and that's been really healing for us it's been not what I expected um People come from all over and uh, we've been a five star rating since we opened wow that's brilliant yeah, I had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> it just happened and I uh, didn't realize that it'd be a part of our healing journey. So when guests come, they they don't realize they're coming to heal. Um, I really invite them to engage in our culture when they come. So I, I am First Nations, we live on reserve and we have practices and ceremonies and um, so in the morning we do like a river cleanse, like kind of like the Wim Hof kind of uh, cold water dip and but I bring in prayer and uh, ceremony into that and guests are more than welcome to join in on that and it's been really healing for them and uh, some have said it's been life-changing so wow yeah well it sounds like I bet you've um met a lot of different people on this journey haven't you um and like getting to know people who come to their guest house can you tell us a bit more about um maybe the, not necessarily the people but like what sort of communities come to you yeah so we've had guests from all over the world from UK from Germany um and just really interesting hearing their story like uh because we're we're situated right on the river and um oh, nice. So some people have shared that, you know, our water is so dirty, like you wouldn't even dream of going in the water. So they really enjoy that part of it and uh, being in nature and uh, seeing the seals, the eagles, the bears. I mean, well, there's so much wildlife here and I'm uh, just so grateful to be able to provide this space and connect with uh, people from all over and realize how different uh, our worlds can be, hey? Mm, yeah that's that's really interesting when you talk about the idea of like him nature and him going into nature and how I suppose it does really impact our um, mental well-being in in that case also um on because I think you, you have got a YouTube haven't you which um, I, I, I've noticed you started following me on and I noticed that did you you did some sort of like um do you know you were doing some walks and that there where you were in nature and could you tell us a bit about those yeah, so I feel that a big part of healing, like we all have some sort of trauma that we go through. And um, I find that connecting with nature is a big part of my healing journey. It's just shutting off those, like we're so distracted. We have so much distractions, right? We have our phones, we got, you know, we're distracted so much. And when we can just sit back and be in nature and let the thoughts go, it, it really helps you connect with your 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 heart and your soul and your purpose of where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's really difficult to sit in the silence, right? It's, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're connecting. And um, so, yeah, I feel like a big part of our, our healing is with nature, going into the river, going into the forest, connecting with the trees, you know, all those things. They're here to support us. 
Yeah, and do you find that, um, because obviously I'm in the UK, you're in America, uh, but um, like where we have our green spaces over here, there is a lot of um, a lot of these trees being cut down um, as a result of um, homes and things being built. But do you find that once it becomes more city-like, it kind of, people kind of lose themselves in a way amongst that sort of chaos? Um, and once the greenery is taken, then people feel more stressed because they don't have that greenery in the space in, in which they had to kind of roam around. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. How does that look? I don't know how that would look in the city where you can go and kind of de-stress, right? So maybe just playing some meditative music and just trying to shut out the outside world for a few minutes, right? Yeah. To yeah. Yourself Put yourself first and give yourself five or 10 minutes a day to de-stress. Mm -hmm. And yeah. even I always find as well, like um, what I've been doing just recently is because um, I work at a pottery studio as well a lot of people have been saying how cathartic it is in the process but also like when people are painting in particular um on the ceramic ware I find that um yeah when they're sitting down and not necessarily listening to like mainstream music not that sort of stuff but maybe like lo-fi quite like relaxed music that hasn't really got an association to like um, the charts or anything like that but I find like once that's put on and people start to get into the creativity itself and the thing that's in front of them, they really start to zone in what it is that they're doing. So all, I don't know, there's just a sense of calmness within the room. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, that's part of, it's just part of turning the thoughts off when you're focused on what you're doing, right? So mm -hmm. that's possible. Do you have any like particular activities or things that you do at the guest house then or what people can partake in? Yeah, so um, like I said, I'm First Nations, so um, we have ceremony like sweat lodge, and uh, so they're more than welcome to join in on that. And then every morning we go into the river, and uh, it's so we got a little group of people that um, come every morning, and um, it's been so healing. So, and then I also provide like uh, if they want a Reiki session or hot stone massage. I think when you come for vacation, you just want to relax. So that is my uh, intention to just have people be comfortable and listen to their wants and needs. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's why we we have a five star rating is I really pay attention to what my guests want and um and I just like to have everything here for them so they don't have to worry, right? And that's so important, like like you just said, like the fact that it's about what everybody else wants. It's not necessarily like you could be really good at something, couldn't you? And if you aren't providing a benefit to those that you're trying to serve, then there's no point, is there? So does do you find that um, like things like Reiki and stuff like that, people are really uh, coming to enjoy especially with like the stone massage and things like that as well well I have one really um, good example of one guest that kind of sticks out to me um, he was a very business oriented man in his suit and very reserved and um, so I have a little uh, pamphlet inside the guest house explaining about the river and uh, he was with his family and so the one morning he's like well what is this river thing like he was just like and I said, well, I explained it to him. He's like, well, okay, I'll try it, I guess. <laughs> so we went to the river and he, like, it's kind of, it's hard to explain over video. How, like, it's a whole process, um, really helping people connect with their bodies and what they're feeling and then going into the water. But um, anyhow, he ended up really having a, just a total emotional breakdown. He just cried and let go. And I was there supporting him along the way. And uh, so then later on that day, you know, I checked on him to see how he was. And he was like, wow. He said this was actually he emailed me about a week later when they got home. And he said, Linda, you helped change my life. Wow. He said this whole experience has been life changing for me. And um, so I love hearing those stories. I love hearing that. Um, you know, we're not alone in this journey. We all have stuff that we're carrying and there's no judgment. There's no shame behind it. It's we all need to connect with ourselves and uh, 
be supported in our healing journey so that's amazing like and it, it goes to prove like through in um, this journey that you've been on like you, you, like I know it must be really hard to have you go through what you've been through but as a result of that good things have also come out of it as well and you're helping other people to find the way and that's amazing that's yeah. so so that's incredible yeah, I just love it. And I'm just, you know, you don't know where you're going in your journey. I didn't expect to be in this place, but uh, it, I wouldn't change it for anything. And I absolutely love it. So that's, that's amazing. So my um, one of my um, other questions now, um, so um, do you think like creativity or like going into these sorts of creative roots with the guest house and the, do you think um, it's really helped during your challenge of getting through what you've been trying to get through yeah so always looking at new ideas right at how we can go through our process of healing because it looks different for so many people right mm -hmm. and um so I like to try different things right so I did not see myself going in the cold water every day I mean it's not easy <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cold but you push through it and you see what works for you and um you know, just trying, like even uh, trying a static dance, moving the body, uh, doing Reiki sound. I also provide uh, sound healing. So oh, really, yeah. So realizing that sound really helps move trauma out of the body. And wow. um, that's another aspect I love doing. It's just um, trying things, right, to see what works. And uh, I'm having really good results and uh, feedback from that as well. And it sounds like um, when you talk about these other things, such as sound and movement and like, it's like um, kind of stimulating the five senses in a way, isn't it? Like everything that gets you in touch with yourself um, from something that's um, maybe you're going through a really deep um, and traumatic experience where you feel really numb to kind of have these senses being stimulated. It's helping you to find yourself uh, again. Yes, I that's what I feel. And, um, you know, it's just going through layers and layers of healing. And it's not a fast process, right? We want to just turn on the switch and be okay now. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, it's a slow process. It's uh, been three years of me going through grief and loss for my son. And, you know, there's good days, there's bad days. But um it's always um, connecting with myself and what am I feeling and going into those really difficult emotions, mm -hmm. right? To feel them and not push them away. That's what I've learned. So, yeah. And I think yeah. like, like how we can see here, that's like the creative piece is really is what kind of helps people to get through those times, even when they don't see themselves as creative either. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So um, as we come towards the end of this um, week's episode, my last um, question to you today is, do you have any words of encouragement or wisdom for people out there today? And it could literally be anything that you, you'd like to share. Sure. Yeah. I like um, to uh, remind ourselves that uh, we are connected to our ancestors, right? So we not only carry their trauma, but we also carry their strength and their resiliency. And we are here today because of them. And so I invite you to, when you're struggling and having a hard day, to call on to your ancestors to help guide you and protect you and keep you safe. And I like to end with just a little saying that I always say is, you are perfect by design. You have no flaws. There's only one you, and you are perfect by design. That's brilliant. No, it's been really, really great speaking with you today, Lyndon. Thanks for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much.